I really like pate. I think it's awesome. Uh, just something about it. It's just so elegant and French, but also very uh, rustic and approachable. I make it for my bistro on a weekly basis, and I thought I would take you along on the journey and see the steps that I go through in order to make a lovely pate. So if you're at all inclined, stick around. So I'm going to grind up some meat. I have about three pounds of pork belly scraps and one pound of pork liver. And I'm just going to put these through the grinder on the larger die. Uh, my machine has two dies, a large hold one and a small hold one. And I'm just going to put this through. I like to cut my meat into strips. Find it feeds through the machine a lot easier. And I'm going to grind right into a mixing bowl because at some point going forward here, I'm going to end up mixing this in the mixing bowl. So it's easy to just grind right into that. This fits. So let's get started here. Generally, I'll just take the pork strips and I'll just feed them in and the auger will grab it and just pull it through and I'll do a cup of pork and then I'll do a couple pieces of liver to sort of get it mixed in together. Now I'm going to change the die on the machine to a finer grind and at this point I'm going to add my ingredients in and run them through to grind. So let me just grab those. I have my ingredients here for my pate. 200 milliliters of heavy cream and 100 grams or about a cup of breadcrumbs. I'm just going to mix these together right away because I want the breadcrumbs to hydrate. Allspice, salt, nutmeg, black pepper, some cognac or brandy. I have three eggs. I have some garlic. This is uh, garlic confit, which has been slow cooked in oil, but Normally I would just use regular garlic, but this is what I have in the restaurant today. And then I've got 100 grams or about three quarters of a cup of onion finely diced. So I'm going to now mix all of these ingredients in to my meat, and then I'm going to run it all through the fine grind. And the goal here is to grind this stuff into the pate. I will start by just cracking my eggs in here. Then I'm going to add my black pepper, nutmeg, salt, allspice, garlic, onion, all in there. Then I have some cognac brandy and then my mixture of breadcrumbs and cream which is the binder this with the eggs is the binder so now that all this is in here I'm just gonna roughly mix it because it's gonna mix together really well when it goes through the machine I like to put the plunger in and then I'm going to just dump this into the tray and I'm just gonna feed it all through probably with my hands. You can see that it's mixing up pretty good. I'm going to mix this further, but it also is fairly sticky, which is what we're looking for. And you can make this pate with a coarser grind if you want more of a country style pate. Uh, you can actually have like large pieces of meat in there. I'm going for a fine grind. I have a base recipe that I've developed and change it all the time based on what sort of meats I have around, what cuts of meat, also how much time I have. Sometimes it's fun to make a design in the pate out of something like ham or a different colored meat. I'm not adding any curing salts to this pate. I have done that in the past. It makes it sort of 
nicer pink color when it's finished cooking, but I'm moving away from having nitrites in the meat. They don't really serve any purpose but to change the color. We have our basic pate mixture. Uh, I'm gonna shut this down and clean this up. This is the fun part. We're just going to mix it in the stand mixer with the paddle attachment. There's about two kgs of meat in here and that's about the maximum this machine will take. So I'm just gonna do it slowly at first. And I usually like to put my hand here so that it doesn't splatter out. <clears throat> And then I'll just stop it and kind of push it away from the paddle for a second with a spatula. Mix it a little bit longer. Just at like speed one or two. And what you're looking for is it's going to get really sticky. You can see how it's sticking. Very sticky. That stickiness is what we're looking for. There's going to be some like stringy stuff like stuck to the paddle. Don't worry about trying to get all that off of there. That's like kind of these long fibrous sinews. They'll melt when you cook it, I guess, for the most part. Um, but I just don't really worry about keeping those. But basically, you've turned this into kind of a meaty, gluey paste. It's very sort of sticky and it wants to hold together and that's what you're looking for it's like super sticky it sticks to your fingers like if you squish it into your thing it'll just stay there all day it won't fall uh, so that's what we're looking for so now i'm going to move the stand mixture out of the way i'm going to get my pate loaf pans ready and we'll get those going i have two pate pans here and i have some canola oil and a brush and I'm just going to brush the inside of these pans with this canola oil. Now, once that's done, I'm going to line the pans with some saran wrap. I do it length, longwise like this. Uh, and then I'm just going to, the canola oil helps the plastic wrap, the cling film stick to the pate pan which is good because we don't want a lot of wrinkles if we can help it. And this is also going to help us remove it from the pan later. This cling wrap is going to go in the oven and get cooked with it. Uh, cling wrap has a high tolerance for heat, so this will not melt because we don't really want this to heat up much beyond 60 degrees centigrade. We have our two pate pans. Now we're going to add in the pate mixture and we kind of want to try to get both of these equally as full. We want to push the mixer into the corners. We don't want any air bubbles. We want it to be a solid loaf. So there's a couple of tricks we're going to use to make sure that we do that. So the first is by just making sure that we really kind of squish that in there. And it's really sticky, so it'll stick to the spoon. We want to tidy up our plastic wrap as we go along. So now I'll put some in this one just to make sure that I'm getting even amount. Try to get it in those corners. Here. Just going to grab a scale here. See how close they are. 1,200 grams. 1,200 grams. So these are about equal. I want them to be equal because I want them to cook at the same rate. And because I'm serving these in a restaurant, I want to make sure that all the portion sizes when we slice these up. So now I'm just going to tidy up my plastic again. Just make sure that I don't have any large folds or anything. Okay, and I'm going to take my spatula and I'm going to make sure that I get things like right down. I want to get that pate right down in that corner. Smooth it out. Same with this one. Very sticky. So it's kind of challenging. It'll stick to your spatula. So now I'm just going to put a little cloth down here. I'm just going to 
drop those onto there just to make sure there's no bubbles. Okay, now I'm going to take my plastic cling film and I'm going to nicely fold it over like an envelope in there like that. Then I'm going to massage the top to make sure that I'm getting any sort of bubbles out. And tuck the end over. And then I'm going to take a pair of scissors and just cut the excess off. And with this one, I'm going to pull that out, fold it nicely, tuck it in there like a little pillow. And I'm going to cut the excess off and fold it over. So here's what I have. A nice little pillow of pate inside of a loaf pan. I have two equal sized, equal weight pates. So the next step with this is to put these in the fridge overnight. Uh, you could cook them right now, but the best thing to do is to let all the spices and salt and all the other ingredients in there sort of co-mingle um, and spread throughout the meat, throughout the pate mix. So you get a really even distribution of everything and everything is nicely, tastes the same, cuts the same, looks the same, very consistent. So we'll leave this in overnight and then tomorrow morning, We'll come back to the restaurant and we'll cook these up. Pâtés were in the fridge overnight and we're ready to put them in the oven. So I have here a container, a hotel pan, and I have a rack in the bottom so that I can suspend my pâté pans above the bottom. So what we're trying to do here is we want to really evenly and slowly cook the pâtés so that they they don't shrink, they don't like melt out. We want that fat to stay in them and we want it to just slowly cook and uh, solidify. So in order to do that, we're going to add water. I have hot tap water here and we're going to fill this pan up to half the height. So it's halfway up the sides of the loaf pans. So now I've got water up to about half this loaf pan and I'm going to put a thermometer in this. Now here's a little trick that I use is that I want to, I want to take the temperature of the middle of the pate. Uh, I don't really want to do it on the side and what I find happens is that as the pate warms up, the probe thermometer will start to sink into it, and eventually it's probing the bottom, uh, which is generally hotter than the center because we're, we're worried about what the temperature of the center is. So in order to stop this from sinking into the pate, I find if I just use half a cork from a wine bottle or maybe a piece of carrot like this, I will just push that probe into the center, and this will keep the probe from sinking any deeper down. So, ta-da. It's my pro tip for today. So now this is going to go in the oven. I'm going to put it in the oven at around 275 degrees. We want our internal temperature to reach 150 degrees Fahrenheit or 65 degrees centigrade. The pâtés have come out of the oven. They've reached their final temperature of 65 degrees centigrade or 150 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, so I'm going to just remove them from the water bath and put them on a rack. Now I have a couple of matching pans that I'm going to place on top. Uh, if you don't have matching pans, you can just cut a little square out of some cardboard and maybe put some tin foil or saran wrap over that and use that. And what we're going to do is we're going to press this down. So I'm going to add some cans to the top of this and those are going to press down on the pate so that it has no bubbles and so it's a dense loaf. Then I'm going to put it in the fridge. It's going to stay in the fridge overnight and tomorrow I will release it from the pans and I'll slice it. So the pate has been in the fridge overnight and now I've taken it out. 
and remove it from the mold. Sometimes it'll be a bit sticky and you can just run it under some cold water to loosen it up because the fat will sometimes stick there. Then we're gonna remove our saran wrap, which should be pretty easy. And you can see the saran wrap is all in one piece. It didn't melt or anything like that. And there we have our pate. There's gonna be some jelly around the outside, uh, which is totally normal. And I usually save that jelly. It's tasty and if you're making a stock or frying something up, you can just throw it in the pan. It's delicious. Um, I usually start when I go to slice it by just removing the odd shaped end and squaring it off. That piece I'll use to try the pate to make sure that it turned out the way I want it. It's a little late to change it at this stage in the game, but and then I like to do about a you know a little that's about a half an inch or about a centimeter and a half nice long knife stroke and there is my pate so i did not use any curing salts but it is pink in the inside and that's like a function of slowly cooking it at a very low temperature um, you get more of a pink color than a gray color and it's nice and dense there's a little bit of holes in there but not a lot and yeah we'll give it a little taste and it tastes exactly like I expected because I've made this several times um, over the years it's always on the menu so we actually make it about every week uh, it's really delicious it's great very simple and something that I highly recommend you try this pate will last two weeks, maybe longer in the fridge, especially if you wrap it really tightly in cellophane. Uh, what we tend to do is we slice it and then we vac seal it. And then you can even take the pate and you can freeze it and it doesn't lose any quality. It's high fat. So it freezes really well without a loss of quality. So if you want to make a large loaf like this you can slice it up if you have a vac sealer or you could wrap it really tightly and plastic wrap and freeze it and then pull it out. It thaws out really quickly. And if you just submerge this in lukewarm water for about 10 minutes, it'll be totally thawed. You don't want to put it in water that's very warm because you don't want to melt that fat. You can now have this on a sandwich or a charcuterie board. Uh, it's great with pickles. And if you're interested in pickles, uh, you should watch this video here, which is a video about refrigerator quick pickles that I also did this week. And those pickles would go fantastic with this pate.